So signs of risk aversion are appearing on the charts. How can we measure it and what does it mean going forward? Hey, this is Arthur Hill, Chief Technical Strategist at TrendInvestorPro.com. Welcome to this video. If you like it, be sure and hit the like button. And if you want to subscribe, be sure to subscribe because I will be putting out videos on a regular basis. So today we're going to look at some ratio charts. We want to know how we can measure risk on and how we can measure risk off. Basically, we're looking at two different assets. You have your riskier asset and then you have your low risk asset or your relative safe haven. Keep in mind, it's all relative. And what we're going to do with that ratio is when that ratio is rising, that means the market is in a risk on mode that is positive for stocks. But if that ratio is falling then that means the market is in a risk off mode or risk aversion. And that is potentially negative for stocks. Let's hit the charts. So before we look at these charts where we're comparing a riskier ETF relative to a safe haven ETF or less risky ETF, I want to show you the method behind the madness, the rationale behind the choice that I made for these ETFs. Now I'm on ETFDB.com, ETFdatabase.com, and it's a great website if you want to know anything about ETFs as far as expense ratios, uh, spreads, liquidity, volume, and a hat tip to Joe for pointing me to this site. So the first one I've got here is the Minimum Volatility ETF, also known as USMV there. And this ETF has a lot of volume. Look at that, 4.7 million shares traded. So it's a very liquid ETF. But if you look at the holdings, it doesn't quite capture what I'm looking for from a minimum volatility ETF. So I'm going to click on the holdings. And if you see here, you can see, okay, Newmont, Nextra, Coca-Cola, fine. Uh, but then we get Visa, which I'm not sure uh, belongs there. And you can see Accenture. So the top 10 look okay, but we need to look at a sector breakdown to see what's really driving this ETF here. So I'm going to scroll down and there's a more charts link here. And now I get a sector breakdown here for the ETF. And look at the biggest sector, technology. Now, this is not what I would expect from a minimum volatility ETF, the kind of profile I would expect. Financials, maybe 14%, but they're consumer discretionary, the third biggest sector at 12%, and healthcare at 11%. So it doesn't fit the profile I'm really looking for from a minimum volatility ETF. Now, the other one from iShares would be the Momentum ETF, MTUM. And if you look at the top 15 holdings here, you can see some stocks you would expect, Microsoft, Visa, MasterCard, but then Procter & Gamble, Consumer Staple, AT&T, uh, a utility, uh, Costco, which is basically a retailer, uh, Southern, another utility. You would expect Starbucks in there, but it doesn't seem to capture what I'd be looking for from a momentum ETF. And then we look at the sector breakdown and yeah, technology is the biggest sector, but the second biggest sector is utilities, 12.63%. And the third biggest sector is real estate, 11%. And then the fourth biggest sector is healthcare. So after technology, the next three sectors really fit more in the mold of lower volatility and lower risk than they do in momentum and higher risk. So that's why I think the MTUM is a less than perfect ETF as far as measuring risk on, risk off. But I do chart it. I don't look at just one ratio pair. As I show you, I'm going to look at several and we're going to put five on one chart. Now, I want to move on to two that I think are more representative of the risk versus high risk versus low risk in a equity ETF. And this is the Invesco High Beta ETF, SPHB. And if you look at the top holdings, just what you would expect, AMD, NVIDIA, Western Digital, Micron. I mean, those are some high volatility, high risk stocks. And you go a little bit further down. And you can see we've got Adobe and Twitter and Amazon. So this is looking more like it. 
And then we look at the sector breakdown and we can see technology 42%. That's what you expect from high beta and a riskier ETF. And consumer discretionary coming in around 10.7% and industrials at 10%. So this is looking more like the profile I'm after when it comes to a high uh, beta or riskier ETF. Now, if you look on this uh, fact sheet here from PowerShares, you can see that there's the description. It invests in stocks that have the highest sensitivity to market movements or beta over the last 12 months. So this is showing stocks that have higher risk. Now, on the other side, we have the low volatility ETF from Invesco SPLV. And each of these has around 100 stocks. And I don't think there's any overlap, and that's the key. You don't want any overlap, and you want these to be at other ends of the spectrum. So high beta is at one end of the spectrum, and low volatility is at the other end, and that's why this makes a good pair. And then when you look at the top holdings here, you can see it's littered with utilities. And I go down to the sector breakdown, and you can see here that we have the biggest sector is utilities at 28%, and then REITs at 19%. So this ETF fits the profile I would expect from a low volatility, lower risk ETF. So this first one is the first pair of ETFs I showed you, MTUM, momentum, and we got minimum volatility, and then we got the ratio of momentum to minimum volatility. And so when this ratio falls, you have relative weakness in momentum, and that means risk off. And when this ratio rises, you have relative strength in momentum, and that means risk on. And you can see since October, momentum has been outperforming minimum volatility based on this ratio. Now, if you look at the individual price charts, they kind of move similar, but you can see momentum broke below the 200 day when minimum volatility basically held and then momentum stayed below that 200 day in November, December and declined. But they're both, you know, rising here. But as I said, it's not the ideal measure for risk on and risk off. Now here's the high beta ETF and the low volatility ETF from Invesco. And there you can see SBHB in the top window, SBLV in the lower window. And then we get the ratio chart. And look how long high beta has been underperforming low volatility. But something happened in October, and we also had a bounce there in January, as you can see from late December to April, we had risk on and the S&P 500 rose. And then there's the May correction here, and that was risk off. So you had high beta underperforming low volatility, and that's what happened here. The market went down. And if we look in October, we had a big move to risk on from October to early January, but then risk moved off as high beta started underperforming low volatility or low volatility started outperforming. And there you can see low volatility moving higher led by utilities and REITs. And you can see the high beta ETF moving lower led by technology and consumer discretionary. So that's why we have this ratio moving lower because the defensive names are moving higher and the offensive names are moving lower. And that signals some risk aversion in the stock market. So now let's look at stocks versus bonds. Uh, this first chart here is going to show the equal weight S&P 500 in the top window, the seven to 10 year treasury bond ETF in the middle window, and the ratio of the equal weight stock ETF relative to the treasury ETF. And we can see here that we had risk on in October. You had stocks rising and you had bonds declining. So you had your riskier asset rising, your safe haven asset declining, and hence you had a rise in the ratio. And look at that move higher in October, November, December into January. So stocks were outperforming bonds and that was a sign of risk on. I mean, it's the ultimate risky asset stocks and it's the ultimate safe haven asset treasury bonds. But we can see things changed in the latter part of January or the second half of January. Bonds just took off 
actually from the beginning of January. And then we can see in the second half of January, we had the ratio falling. And that is because RSP fell a little bit. But the combination of this sharp move higher in TL, uh, IEF and this move lower in RSP caused the ratio to fall. So it looks like risk off as far as stocks relative to bonds. Now, I also do this with SPY and TLT. And by the way, I'm using unadjusted data on all these charts. You can see I preceded my symbols with an underscore there. So here we can see that SPY was moving higher and then we have a little pullback. And when it was moving higher, TLT was moving lower. But TLT turned up sharply in January. And you can see that pushed that ratio down. So that told you that stocks were outperforming bonds from the middle of August until the latter part of January, but now they're underperforming. So that is a sign of risk aversion within the stock market over the last few weeks. And then here is the junk bond ETF, HYG, and we can see that in the top window, and this is unadjusted. It's still trending up and it's above its 200 day. It's a slow slog higher. And this treasury bonds, which were moving down, and then treasury bonds shot up as junk bonds moved lower, and hence that ratio moved lower. So that told you that investors preferred or treasury bonds were outperforming junk bonds. And that ratio is back down to its October levels, and it never got really above its 200 day. So this ratio is showing a bit of risk aversion in the market right now. So this is a chart I showed on TrendInvestorPro.com on Friday, where I show the different periods of risk off in red, risk on in green, risk off, risk on, and now we've moved into risk off. And the reason I think that is because I put five ratios here, and I can just get them in, no can't, uh, but high beta relative to low volatility moving down, high beta relative to high quality moving down, there's momentum relative to minimum volatility moving up. That's the outlier. But we have stocks underperforming treasuries. And you can see we have junk bonds underperforming treasuries. So these five ratios point to a risk averse environment right now. So I'm using daily charts and my time frame is probably what a lot of people would say medium term. And that means I think that the risk aversion we're seeing in the market kind of fits my backdrop for a corrective period over the coming weeks or months. We can see those key ratios that I showed you. Most of them are falling, which means the riskier assets are underperforming the safe haven or the low risk assets. And until we start to see those ratios turn up, I think we will remain in some sort of a corrective mode for the stock market. So thanks very much for tuning into this video on the YouTube channel for TrendInvestorPro.com. Please give a thumbs up if you like it and always hit the subscribe button if you want to be alerted to future videos. I will be posting on a regular basis. Have a great day.